Your Humanities Half Hour is brought to you by the Northern Marianas Humanities Council. Welcome to Your Humanities Half Hour. I'm Catherine Perry. Well, here in the Marianas, we have three official languages, English, Chamorro, and Carolinian. And sometimes you'll hear speakers, uh, native speakers of these languages, debate what is the proper pronunciation, even in English, what is the right word to use, what is the translation of the word to another language. And here to help us understand better the use of the Chamorro language across the Marianas in Guam. It's my pleasure to welcome uh, to our show today a native Chamorro speaker. He's also an editor with the Chamorro Dictionary Revision Committee, Manuel F. Borja, Uncle Manny, welcome back. And also with us is a linguistic consultant to the committee, Dr. Sandra Chung of the University of California, Santa Cruz. Dr. Chung, also welcome back. It's been actually a number of years since we've had you on the show, but you have been making periodic visits back to the Marianas, haven't you? That's true. That's what true. What is the role that you're playing here in addition to being a part of the um, dictionary Revision Committee. Well, in addition to the dictionary work, um, I'm writing a reference grammar of Chamorro, and so I come back um, to work on that. And I also regularly come back with my colleague Matt Wagers from the University of California, Santa Cruz, to do psycholinguistic experiments on the Chamorro language. And I hope we have time to talk a little bit more about those those projects. Let's talk a little bit about the two Chamorro orthographies and their differences. Bottom line, is the way we say it right and the way they say it a little bit wrong? I think that both in Guam and in the CNMI, the way that it is said is mostly the same, right? The, ro- the Rota dialect is different, but for Saipentinian on the one hand, Guam on the other hand, you're all saying it kind of the same way, right? What's different is the way that it's spelled. <coughs> That's correct. So <coughs> that um, brings us to the, the official orthographies. The CNMI has an official orthography that was adopted by the legislature in 2009. And this is the newer orthography. Guam still uses the old orthography. Uh, you know, when we, when the dictionary, the Dunka Ogo uh, Topping Dictionary came out, and we, I would like to refer to that as the old orthography. And at one time, the cinema was using that one too, until 2009 when we revised, when we changed the orthography to conform more to how, um, you know, the word is spoken. Like, for example, uh, the word Polu. Um, in the old orthography, it is spelled P-O-L-O, and there's a reason why that is spelled that way. And so you have to be a native speaker, you have to know Chamorro to know that even though it is spelled P-O-L-O, you would pronounce it P-O-L-U, Polu. With the new orthography the cinema is using, you will be writing P-O-L-U now instead of P-O-L-O. So all of this, even like um, S-T instead of s t you know, all of those uh, things are um, are changed to reflect the way it is spoken. So the new orthography helps the beginner, or tomorrow language beginner, to read it the way it is, uh, you know, written, and to write it the way the way it is spoken. So it's much easier. And um, as a writer, tomorrow writer, at one time before this new orthography came, it was very very frustrating for me because I would refer to the dictionary to see how it is spelled, because it is not spelled the way I say it. But now with this new orthography, I don't have to use the dictionary. Now when you say new, when was that adopted? Yeah, 2009. Okay, so not too long ago. And for those that may not be familiar with some of the terminology, uh, what exactly is an orthography? Orthography is just a fancy uh, term for spelling, right? An orthography is a spelling system. Orthography comes from the Greek words that mean correct writing. 
And that's how you can get into a fight with someone else, <laughs> whether they're spelling something correctly. Right. Um, it's important to understand that the two Chamorro orthographies that we have now, the new CNMI orthography and the older Guam orthography, really are both organized according to principles. They're just different principles. The CNMI orthography um, privileges the, the principle that it's called one sound, one symbol, or another way of, of saying it is write it the way it sounds. Kind of like the example Uncle Manny gave Absolutely. of Polu, which is spelt with an O in the old orthography and spelt with a U in the new orthography. If you think of, unlike an, another language which mostly spells it the way it sounds is Spanish. Not entirely, but mostly. Now, the older, the Guam orthography, on the other hand, is based on the principle, spell the word, spell a word the same way, no matter what forms it appears in. So English works like this. If you think about the words electric, electricity, and electrician, they sound different. And the consonant that appears after the tri, electric, that's a K, electrician, that's a sh, electricity, that's an S, they're all written with the letter C. That's because all those words are formed from the word electric, and that word is spelled the same way in all three of its forms. That's right? true. See, yes. English is very complicated. But I really appreciate the explanation you gave, Uncle Manny, because I have been um, trying to speak more tomorrow, and I often right. go online to a website where you can find a Chamorro English uh, dictionary, and I... A este, este is a, a perfect example. I'll see that. And um, Chamorro is like my third language. And I was thinking I had been saying it wrong all my life um, because of the way I was seeing it written online. And now that you've explained that this is the old orthography and as a native speaker, you should be able, you would automatically know um, now it makes sense. I, I was hearing it correctly. I was using it correctly. It's just that the uh, orthography that was used on this website was different from what I, I remember hearing and using. Yeah, there's a, there's a kind of simple way of checking your own intuitions. If the spelling of the last syllable contains E or O, consider the possibility that they should be pronounced the way I or you is pronounced mm. instead. So P O Glota L O, consider the possibility that the last O is really a U. Um, or Esti, Esti, E S T E in the Guam orthography, consider the possibility that la that last E is really standing in for I. Okay. It's okay. And that clears away like a lot of the difference. Yes, and I think I'd like to to add that with these differences, you know, um, in the Chamorro cultures, in almost all of the, you know, cultures, especially the island cultures, the idea of respect is very important, right? So I think if we basically work within the con within this principle that that we respect the um, the differences, so that one should not disrespectfully say you're wrong or you know the other vice versa so if we have that respect for the other to allow you know in english we say we agree to disagree and you know both are happy <laughs> so if we allow to, uh, to respect each other and if one wants to continue writing um sd as sd then you know uh, we will respect that and they may have reason why they uh, want to continue that maybe because that's how they learned it but I'm going back to the <laughs> to the orthographies. Actually, there may be uh, maybe you know more than three uh, ways of writing because in the in both old and new orthography, um, in the Chamorro orthography, we take out the C except for proper nouns, you know, like Kamatsu and and we put a K. But for I have a cousin who's in her 80s, and whenever she writes to me, she would use a C for a K, you know? And so they, they would write the way, and I would understand that, and I respect that. I don't 
say, oh no, we don't use C anymore. We, oh no, we just allow for that. And another important thing that I think um, Sandy pointed out is by allowing the differences, we, we, we get to use the language because if we so we don't allow the differences and then we don't use the language, it's going to die really sooner than later. But it's okay to be making mistakes or it's okay to be saying it differently and to allow for that, you know, that, that uh, it's, 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 it's uh, healthy. I'm glad you brought that up because I opened up our, our chat today with a with a question. It was a joke, actually. Are they saying it wrong? That was a joke. <laughs> <laughs> I think we all ag uh, agree with you, you know, just the fact that we uh, keep the language alive and continue to use it. Um, can we talk um, to the families a little bit? Um, I, I've had many people my age and younger express that they're hesitant um, to speak the language um, Oftentimes, their their parents haven't spoken to them in the language, either Chamorro or Carolinian, so they're not confident. But at the same time, they they feel a little bit of um, shame or hesitation in trying to speak the language. How can we encourage them and encourage more families um, to keep the language alive, which is such an important part <coughs> of our culture? Yes, I think that um, if we understand that... Um, learning different languages is, is, is a plus instead of a minus in the growth of a human being. Because I think at one time, or people can think that you can only do good in one, <laughs> you know, you cannot be, you cannot be a good uh, Chamorro speaker and an English speaker at the same time. But I found that, uh, not to be correct, uh, being in the States, you know, where I would have, have this uh, person speak in English and then turns around and speaks in Spanish perfectly. And so um, uh, uh, studies show that that is helpful and it is actually good uh, to and, and and you can learn both many languages not just one. But uh, I I know that at one time because for my generation uh, we were native speakers, you know, my generation. But then <coughs> because we struggled in school uh, because it was in 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 Chamorro, we didn't want our children to have the experience that we went through, so that is why we kind of do not teach them, um, and that's why the younger generations now do not speak it, because it was the intention of the parents to for them to do better in school. But I think we are realizing now that um, we have made a mistake, that we could have spoken to them both in English and more, and one, as Sandy was sharing, that in some places, they would, uh, the father may be speaking to the child in Chamorro only, and then the mother may be in English only, so that they can go bilingual. But what I like to share too is, because <laughs> you asked how can we promote the teaching of the Chamorro language, I think we're lucky in the cinema that we do have still native speakers. Native speakers, by definition, is, you know, you, look, uh, the, you speak the language from, from birth, that's the, the, your mother's tongue. You did not learn it when you were older. So we have, like my generation, who are still around, they're still native speakers. So if we speak more of this and not worry that, uh, that um, you know, the, 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 the younger generation will, uh, will not learn English better uh, and continues to that then the, the children will learn. So I will encourage, and I'm very happy when I go places and I hear people talking in Chamorro, mm -hmm. because um, that that helps with the uh, learning, the young ch generation learning Chamorro. I completely agree. It's also really true that one of the things that can make younger speakers hesitant is they hear the older generation criticizing their language because it sounds different or it the words are used differently. But it's really important to remember that differences among generations are a property of healthy languages. That's how languages, help, you know, a language that is living and, and uh, very strong changes. It's, it's a, the younger generation says things a little bit differently. So um, it's very important <coughs> to affirm that or, you know, not, not to be too critical of it because it's very natural, very natural thing. Kind of like with, <coughs> with culture, they say culture is always changing. And if we just want to live exactly like we lived 200 years ago, 
um, it's not really re realistic. Um, we should, for me, I feel keep the values of our culture um, while the trappings of culture may change, but the values, like you said, of respect mm -hmm. and, and all that are what make us unique. Yeah, yeah. E ev even the, co you know, while the content of the values might not change, how they get applied might change, you know. So respect is really fundamental to Chamorro culture, but it's, it's you know, it's, it's just vaguely possible that the, the people to whom the people who received respect was a different set of people in the very, very old times than it is now. Mm -hmm. it's, it's possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd also like to share <coughs> that um, maybe for some people who they may say, oh, maybe uh, Jamar language is not that important, for example, because, you know, it has so many Spanish words, it has some, it may not be a real language. And it is true that Jamar language has a lot of Spanish words and other borrowed words. But uh, what makes a language a language is not the, the words in the language, but the rule that govern that language, the grammar. Mm. Uh, so if we uh, really <laughs> understand, uh, keep in mind that the Chamor grammar is 100% is Chamor grammar. It's not Spanish. Mm. Like, for example, in the word, um, li let's use the English word, snow. You know, we borrow the word snow. You don't say in English snow, no. <laughs> but we say it more snow, no, it allows because the grammar allows you to do that. So means it's snowing. It's snowing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So the, the the grammar, so it is a uh, unique, you know, grammar just as any so other language. So interesting. Yeah. So by realizing that that it is uh, an authentic language, it yeah. and that is why the the experiment that is being done with psycholinguistics, the, it helps with the, you know, there's a th there's a few theories of how the mind works. And a lot of the data that comes in <coughs> from uh, to, to to have scientists uh, come up with theories of how the mind works come from large languages, you know, that they've done studies with yeah. English, Chinese, and very few uh, from smaller, smaller languages and yeah. more included now because thank goodness we have the scientists from the University of California, Santa Cruz, like Sandy and uh, Mike Wages that are doing psych psych linguistic studies in more languages to contribute to the wider you know, knowledge for the mind work. But going back to to what you said about um, language like culture, you know, that it changes and and uh, we adapt to the new changes. What if we just continue with the old uh, way of uh, culture? Uh, the time is, is changing, but a, a good idea about the change, and that is why it's important to know this, because people can come into an argument about the <laughs> direction or term in Guam and Saipan. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Because you better tell me this because I might need to be receive I directions in yeah. Chamorro someday. And so if you're totally in Guam <coughs> and you say, Ano Lago, it means you go north. Okay. And if you're in Saipan, Dinian, Ano Lago means you go west. No way. Yeah. Oh, this is and important why, to why know. Why is that? I don't know. We can tell you. <laughs> Because the in as uh, and Sandy will you know help as in many uh, languages in the Pacific too, the directional term is not in terms of compass direction. Okay. It is in terms of ocean or land. Okay. So when I'm looking toward the ocean, that's law going tomorrow, regardless whether you're on Guam or in Saipan. In, in the real tomorrow language, if not compass direction. So law is always where the ocean is. Oh. So it could be north, south, east, west. Right. And, and hot, yeah. And yeah, so, so Lago is, is uh, Towards west, the ocean. North, and then to your right is Katan. To your left is Lutan, and to your back is Hadza. As you're oh, as you're, as you're facing, facing, facing the ocean, ocean yeah. orientating to the ocean, not yeah. the North Pole. Right. <laughs> and so what happened is... This makes a lot of sense. When the changes were been made to mean what is Hadza is in North, South, on Guam, because uh, the time, the center for commerce, and is in Haganya. Yes. And if you're in Haganya, and you take the compass and you look to the ocean logo, the compass points north. Really? Okay. Okay. And when you're in Saipan, and they used it as a point of reference, Garpan. Yes. At the time when they were changing them, when you're in Garpan and you look logo and you look at the compass, it points west. Mm. So that is why it's true that, you know, for, for Guam North, uh, 
the, the, the log is, is, is you're facing north in the compass one, and it's true that in Saipan you're looking west at logo in terms of compass. But that is why we kind of like uh, suggest that because one of the points that I think I'd like to share is it is good to adopt, you know, languages, uh, words from different languages like strawberry, icebox, things like that. And I wish that we had adopted north, south, east, west as the directional term instead of changing that to the, because then when we adopt north, Guam and uh, Saipan in, as a Chamorro word, we will not be arguing whether north is north, or because <laughs> we, but because we change, you know, to the. But at the same time, that's it's so indicative of the cultural tie to the ocean to have our directions based on pro the direction of the ocean. Yeah. Yes. Wow, that is very, very interesting. Mm -hmm. Um, well, when we come back, let's talk a little bit more, as you said, about how the brain works and some psycho, psycho experiments you're doing, <laughs> Dr. Chung. We'll be back after this break. The Northern Marianas Humanities Council invites you to the 75th anniversaries of the Battles of Saipan and Tinian multimedia exhibit from June 12 to July 14, featuring never-before-seen photos and footage of the people of the Marianas during the battles in 1944. Photos will be exhibited at the Northern Mariana Islands Museum of History and Culture, and footage will be screened at the American Memorial Park. Join us in commemorating the resiliency of the Marianas peoples at this historic exhibit from June 12 to July 14. Welcome back to Your Humanities Half Hour. Our guests today are Dr. Sandra Chung, a linguistic uh, consultant to the Chamorro Dictionary Revision Committee and also uh, she's with the University of California Santa Cruz and Manuel F. Borja he is an editor uh, on the committee and a Chamorro native speaker. Um, tell us a little bit about the experiments you'll be conducting while you're here this time Dr. Chung. Well uh, I think that we both although Manny and I are involved in these experiments the person who is really the um, person who knows everything is Matt and he's not with us right now he's <laughs> flying in from China tonight oh okay okay <laughs> but uh, he's the psycholinguist uh, these experiments which are entirely in Chamorro are designed to probe how um, native speakers of Chamorro understand the Chamorro language in real time and a way of thinking about this is whatever language you speak and understand you're understanding it as someone speaks it as they speak. So as I say this sentence, you're not waiting until I get to the end, until I get to the period, as it were, to figure out what I said. Your, your mind is constantly making hypotheses about what I could be saying. Right. And this is the, the kinds of decisions that we make on the fly to do this are made in milliseconds. They're made in very, very small time intervals. So what psycholinguists do is they use um, different types of experiments to, to get at how language is understood in these very um, incremental portions very quickly by the brain. And as Manny said, mostly until very recently, most of these experiments were done on um, the national languages of highly industrialized societies using university students who are 18 to 21 and um, who had to do it for <laughs> course credit. And so, <laughs> oh, okay. you know, it's a little bit of a distorted sample. One could wonder how reliable the data are of that's their sample of humanity. Yeah, yeah. So what's exciting about our research is that we, w we have a much broader spectrum of community members who participate, a much broader age range. We're um, not just working with universities, not just working with very young people whose attitudes are not fully form possibly. Mm -hmm. And some of our results have been very interesting. Uh, I personally like these experiments because we interact with so many different speakers of Chamorro. We speak to them in Chamorro ahead of time to explain to them uh, what the task is and to explain that it's not a test. <coughs> we debrief them afterwards to find out how, what their reactions were to the experiment and how we could make it better. And I, I usually don't get to speak that much tomorrow to that many people in two weeks. It's really fun. <laughs> it's really great. Yeah, we um, have done this experiment in these kinds of experiments in the past in 
Saipan, Tinian, and Rota. I'm sure we, you have some listeners who might be thinking, oh, how can I be involved in that experiment? How do you r recruit your participants? Yes, we usually um, make announcements, and in fact, uh, we announce on the radio, the newspaper, and mostly also, and, and a lot, very effectively, too, through the word of mouth, you know. So, do you know someone who's a native speaker? Ask them. And we will have the indigenous speakers South, as we have mm. throughout the, the islands. Um, yeah, there's uh, something to add with what Sandy has said that uh, this experiment has been going on for several years, and uh, many of the uh, results have appeared in uh, uh, professional journals, national journals. Wonderful. Yeah. It's nice to know that our languages are, are being featured yeah. in some of those publications. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to thank you both so much for your time, and most especially for breaking down this very tech, what could be a very technical topic <laughs> related mm -hmm. to orthography uh, in, in layman's terms so that we can understand. Um, I'd like to ask if you have any final thoughts before you go in. Um, Uncle Manny, also, if you could share a little bit in Chamorro uh, about the importance of respecting our language and using our language. No, a different shape, you know, so I'm going to say earlier, but no, we have different classes in orthography. Because Malagos is a part of the Sotsu, it's a part of the continua, from a tick, if you know that, because I keep my hobby, no homework, so from Magu, from Banidoso, like it, but from a tongue, like it, like it. How good, Dr. Chang? Maybe I'll just leave it at that. Thank you. Jesus Moss. Thank you so much. And uh, as mentioned, our guests today have been uh, Manuel F. Borja and Dr. Sandra Jung, uh, advocates uh, for the Chamorro language, I guess we could say, and uh, students of it and teachers of it. Um, thank you so much for your work on behalf of our people and our language. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. This has been Your Humanities Half Hour. I'm Catherine Perry. This program was supported by a We the People grant awarded to the Northern Marianas Humanities Council from the National Endowment for the Humanities. Any views, findings, conclusions, or recommendations expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily represent those of the National Endowment for the Humanities or the Northern Marianas Humanities Council. Mm -hmm.